Welcome to Aging is for Everyone. I'm Marian Deutschman sitting in for Laura Mondello. Today's topic is Buffalo's urban farming. Now urban farming is something that is catching on all over the country, even globally. Why? Well, local produce is, doesn't have to travel a long distance to get there. You can enjoy local produce in season. It's the freshest produce. And we have an expert here. Our first guest is Donna Picard from the Massachusetts Avenue Project, which is popularly called MAP. Yeah. Tell us about MAP. Sure. Um, well, the Massachusetts Avenue Project is a community-based organization. Um, we have been around since 1992. It was a, formed um, from residents who just got together and wanted to really improve the neighborhood and provide some alternatives for youth. And the organization has been through um, a lot of changes over the years, but... And you've been there for how many years? <laughs> for 16 years, so... So you're the first, you said you were the first employee? Yes. Um, and uh, so I have seen the history and um, really <clears throat> our current program, Growing Green, which is our urban agriculture program that trains young people. Um, we work with teenagers 14 to 20 years old um, yeah. and we employ them. We give them jobs and job training around um, how to grow their own food, um, where their food comes from. We train them on food policy issues. Um, they have their own youth-run business, so they learn some business skills. Um, they learn how to grow food and distribute that food. Part of our mission is really to improve um, healthy food access, especially in neighborhoods that don't have easy access. So if there's no grocery store in your neighborhood, if you're not within walking distance of a store that carries fresh produce, um, those are the places that uh, we like to go with our produce. Now, do you, how do you, it sounds as though you strategically select those 14 to 20 year olds. So they have to be urban? Um, live in an urban area? Yes, for the most part, um, we prioritize kids that are urban, kids that are low income. Um, we Most of our kids, because we're located on the west side of Buffalo, come from the west side, but we do also get some kids from the east side and um, from occasionally from North Buffalo. Um, but when we select kids, it's really um, based on those two criteria. So now they grow it, mm -hmm. the food, they they create it into a product and sell it? Yeah, so um, they right now have three products, a, a salad dressing, um, a chili starter, and a salsa. And when they first come up with their product ideas, they do use some of the produce from our farm to kind of work out the recipes. But then once they figure out the recipe and batching that up, then we source that produce that goes into the products from other local farms. So now I know that you have a new building. We that, do. And you were very proud of that because <coughs> th over that 16 year period, MAP has changed from the time you first became an employee. You had a building that burned down in 2005. Yes. And now you have what? What's well, coming? Um, our new project, and we don't have the building yet, but we are working on a capital campaign to raise money to create a new training center at our farm. Um, our farm is on Massachusetts. We do own a house there, um, but the house was built as a residential building. It wasn't really created um, to have, you know, space for training and space for a teaching kitchen and, you know, space for cold storage for food. Um, so our new training space will really be a community hub for all those things. We'll have training space that we can use with our kids, but we can also use, we do a lot of training with the community. Last year... For entrepreneurs, <coughs> small businesses? Um, not exactly that, but... Um, 
um, training around um, how to grow your own food. Um, we do a lot of training and tours with people. Um, schools bring their kids to our farm all the time for field trips. Um, and so being able to provide that training to the community um, in, a, in a building that is set up for that. Um, we also um, want to have a teaching kitchen because we do a lot of nutrition education, um, both with our young people. Um, and we hope to be able to expand that to the community as well. Um, and you are the recipients of the Junior League Showhouse Fund. We are. So, so that was the start for the building? Was yes, that it? those were the first funds we got in the door and we're very grateful to the Junior League. They were a fabulous partner throughout that process. And we just found out on Friday um, that we were also awarded a $150,000 grant from the Patrick Lee Foundation. So we're almost, well, we're more than halfway to our goal of our capital campaign. And your goal is? It's about $675,000 we need to raise for the project. $675,000. Um, so, <laughs> Can people help you? When is this yes. capital campaign going on? How can people find out more about making contributions to the sure. organization? Sure. Yeah, you can definitely go to our website. Um, we have a place to donate on our website, and we um, are hoping to have some more events and um, things to let the public know about the project. But if you're interested, certainly um, you can call me. Um, we are very excited to share the news and, and and really um, inform the community of what we're trying to do. So, and your phone, your phone number is on, that's on Grand Street. Yes, now, right? it's on Grand Street, um, mm -hmm. eight eight two five three two seven extension two. Um, but again, you can go to our website too and find out more information. So you have a growing green project. You have teens that you're helping. You're training the community. It's a very worthwhile organization. Thank I, you. I want to thank Diane for raising our awareness of the value of MAP and its projects. It's really for all ages, isn't it? It is. So we'll be right back with the next segment of Aging is for Everyone. Thank you. Okay. I hope we got it. <laughs> 